Okay, so once you have uh, actually downloaded your image and you're ready to go, you're going to pull up, you're going to launch Photoshop. This is the image you will see. Uh, you can open, instead of create new, we're going to go to open and you're going to retrieve that image that you saved to your desktop. So open and I am going to go to my desktop. If you saved it on a flash drive, it'll be under here. If you saved it on a DVD or whatever, you can just click on this PC and find it. I saved mine on my desktop, which means I'll move it later to a file folder. Um, but for right now, it's easy to, for me to retrieve just by putting on my desktop. So I'm going to open what I call the original room open and there it is now you probably want to save immediately you're going to go file save as and then you're going to uh, call it my room or if we want to get uh, professional about this you'll go Curtis and then Back, uh, underscore a S -S -I -G -N, assignment one. Okay, and then later on, um, I'll you know, and then you could call it room. Okay, I like underscores better than dashes. So, Curtis assignment one room. Click save, and the reason why you want to do that first, that's so you don't mess up the original room. Uh, at the same time, if you do, you can go back to, photo, uh, to Blackboard and download the original file again. But if you don't like doing that or having to stop and do that, then there you are. Now, first thing we want to do is clean up that awful carpet there uh, to zoom. These are all your toolbars over here. And the wonderful thing is this, uh, this can come off and you can pull it off and move it wherever you want, or you can anchor it there. So I am going to choose, I like the little one, and you can make it two columns if you want. I'm going to choose the zoom tool to zoom it up. You can also go control plus to zoom up and control minus to zoom down. And this is one of my favorite tools for the selection tool. Here and here are your selection tools. And notice that when you hover over them, it tells you what this tool does. And the wonderful thing about Adobe Creative Cloud is on some of these, these this little screen will start moving and demonstrating how it works. That's kind of cool. I think you can get this one to go. Anyhow, so I'm going to choose the Polygon Lasso tool. If you can't find it, click on this little arrow. It would be under the Lasso tool. Uh, if you can't find it there, down here are where all your extra tools are. See, so you can find it under there. So anyhow, um, I'm going to choose the Polygon Lasso tool, and I'm going to click on the floor, just the floor. I'm not going to worry about these cords because I'm going to get rid of those cords. We definitely want to include all that ugly black carpet. Can you believe this is how a carpet looks when somebody moves out of an apartment? Been there, done that. I know how grungy they can look after a year of living there. Okay, so there I have selected. And notice that I came right back to my stopping point here. When I came back to that stopping point, I had a little O. Let me try that again. I'm going to deselect. I'm going to choose my polygon lasso tool again, and I'm going to go around the room like so. And the reason why I'm doing this twice, I'm going to try to get as close as possible. Uh, these programs, you're as good as your mouse control, which is why I highly recommend, now notice that little zero that occurred right there, that shows that I've closed my path. In both the Photoshop and Illustrator, it's very important that you close your path. That way it becomes a single unit that I can move. Look, I can move this by itself, right? Uh, so that's when it becomes a single unit. You must close your paths in order to do this. You have to, that means going back to the original point where you started.
So you need to know where you started so you know where to end, which means sometimes the best thing to do is to click off the screen and go around that way. I knew I started right there in that corner, so that's why I was able to go back there. So anyhow, now that you have it start, now that you have it selected, uh, you cannot do anything to the rest of the room, only the carpet here. So I'm going to hover over this tool, and as you can see, it tells me it's the clone stamp. So I'm going to take the clone stamp and I choose my alt key and we get this funny little symbol that says this is what I'm copying. I'm going to click once with my mouse and then I'm going to go over the trash in the room. Just right here. I'm going to clean up all the trash in this carpet. Uh, if you want to clean up some of the stains before you go, but that's okay because what we're going to do with the carpet these stains will not show. But you can say there's stains all over the carpet from wear and tear. Next, and notice over here in the history, this little tab here uh, shows uh, everything I've done. So I can go back to the original, original and start over, or I can go all the way down to the end and keep going. You want to save quite a bit. The file save, I labeled this my room, so see now I don't have to worry about uh, messing up the original room. Next, I'm going to click on adjustment. If you cannot find adjustment or history or anything like that, it's all under window here. See, there's adjustments, there's your history, and it tell the check mark says what I have out. Adjustments I have out too. But this is your little menu bar, and you can customize that the way you want once you get comfortable with all these tools. I know beginning um, designers tend to get overwhelmed with all the wonderful tools and features that Adobe Photoshop has to offer. So um, if you're overwhelmed, just stick to the ones that I'm showing you today. Okay, so next I'm going to click under Adjustment. Again, if you can't find it out there, click on Adjustment and see it's checked, so it tells me it's out. So I'm going to, cho I'm going to choose this little scale right here. Uh, again, if you hover over it, it tells you what it does. So it's Color Balance. So I'm going to play around with these. Let's say I want a pretty purple. I want a pretty purple. You can make the rug any color. Notice this is the mid-tones. Now I'm going to do the highlights. Highlights here, I'll make like a light pink. And then I'll do the shadows, which is going to be a darker blue. Now it's really getting, yeah, now it's more. I want it more purple than I do rose or it. And then, of course, the mid-tones. I'm going to make sure they're nice and even. And then the highlights, maybe I'll do the little pink there. Yeah, little pink highlight on top of the purple. Uh, you can preserve the luminos luminosity. Look what that does to it. I think I'll keep mine off to make it more realistic. Uh, the more you skew these, the more it starts looking unnatural. And we want to keep it looking fairly natural. So there is my room, my layer. I go under layer and I flatten. You can see what I'm doing here. I went under layer and I hit the flatten image. That flattens it out. Notice what happened over here. All my layers disappeared and I've got one solid layer. And notice my selection is gone now. I still don't like that stain on the carpet there, but I will go back later on and clean up that dark spot. Uh, you can, let me show you what happens if you don't select it first. If you try to clean it up without selecting it, it's going to get the wall and you won't have that nice sharp edge. And I'll be looking for that. So don't make sure you um, undo. Okay, so make sure you don't do that. Make sure you select either the wall or the rug before you clean that area up. I could always go back to history here and go back to my selection tool which is way up here and then my room selected again so that's how i clean it up okay good to do things over and over again that way my students can see what i'm doing and why i'm doing it and I want you to play around with this assignment, daydream, visualize, fantasize, make this room the room you've always wanted. 
So again, under adjustments, color balance, I just love this tool because it allows you to play around with it. So magenta, it doesn't look like it's selected, but you can see only the rug is changing. So here we got a purple midtones and a little more cyan. We'll talk about color theory and how they get these. On the highlights, I'm going to add more magenta for that pink. And under shadows, I'm going to add more purple. There we go. Now I want my pink back under highlights. There we go. Pink highlight on a purple background. Now there's my beautiful purple carpet with my cleaned up black edge there. I like that much better. Okay, so now I can go layer. You know, it's off my screen cast o -matic mirror. Let me see if I can make this larger. No, nope, it won't let me make the mirror any larger. But as you can see, when I go under layer and I choose flatten image, my image flattens completely. You can also find it under here. But again, it's off the screen. If I do that, I have to make it extremely small for you to see. Okay, let me show you. Layer. Still can't see it. To make the screen very, very small for you to see. Layer. Still can't see it there. But you can see it here. When I look, click on the layers, you can see you've got a flattened image right here. Ah, it's off the screen too. 